My dearly beloved in Christ, in today's gospel, we see a lawyer or a learned man of the law, as it says, putting our Lord to the test. And he asked him, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, he must have thought our Lord would have answered by giving one of the Ten Commandments as the greatest. But our Lord did not. Rather, he, we might say, summarized all the Ten Commandments into what we call the two great commandments. And the first is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. And the second is like the first, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And it is very important for us to remember this because as St. Augustine said, love God and do whatever you will. Meaning if you really love God, then you won't break the commandments. In fact, our Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So love of God then is proved by obedience to God's holy will. But notice how our Lord gives the, what we call the two great commandments and the order in which he gives them. First and foremost, love of God with all of one's heart, soul, and mind. That must come first, and then love of neighbor. And we could summarize the whole problem in the church in the 1960s with Vatican II and all of the changes that came and all of the subsequent loss of faith, loss of vocations, etc., to a reversion or a distortion of this proper order. Love of God must come first. But that was put aside. And all you heard was about charity towards one's neighbor, which is important. But without the love of God, it's not charity. Without the love of God, all of the acts of kindness towards one's neighbor are merely humanitarian, philanthropic works of kindness. Charity means that it is done ultimately for the love of God, that we see Christ in others, that we do good works, we perform the corporal and spiritual works of mercy for the love of God. As our Lord said, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. So we hear a lot, or I should say they hear a lot in the modern church about social justice and all the works of charity and concern for one's neighbor, but very little about God and putting him first. And especially if you look at the Ten Commandments, note the order that the first three pertain to our duties to God. And then we have the remaining seven, our duties toward our neighbor and ourselves. So first comes our duties to God. And what are those? The first commandment pertains to the worship of God, to assisting at Holy Mass, our prayer life, giving God the worship that is due to him. The second commandment concerns respect for God's holy name and the holy name of Jesus Christ. And then the third is concerned with the day that God has set aside for himself. Keep holy the Lord's day. So these must come first before all other works of charity and before all other commandments, those which pertain to God. Now in this regard, I'd like to read to you a short section of the words of our Blessed Mother to two children in southeastern France, La Salette, France, in 1846. And I mention it for two reasons, three reasons really. One is because the anniversary of that apparition comes up this Wednesday, September 19th. And second, because it was a very unique apparition in which the children saw our Blessed Mother weeping. And as she spoke to them, she continued to weep. And it's interesting, they said the tears streamed down her face. And then they fell, but they never reached the ground. When they reached her knees, they shattered like crystal and became part of the globe of light around her. But the fact is, 
that Our Lady was weeping continually during this one appearance to these two children. So these are the words of our Blessed Mother. Come to me, my children. Do not be afraid. I am here to tell you something of the greatest importance. If my people will not obey, I shall be compelled to loose my son's arm. It is so heavy, so pressing, that I can no longer restrain it. How long I have suffered for you. If my son is not to cast you off, I am obliged to entreat him without ceasing. But you take no least notice of that. No matter how well you pray in future, no matter how well you act, you will never be able to make up to me what I have endured for your sake. I have appointed you six days for working. The seventh I have reserved for myself, and no one will give it to me. This it is which causes the weight of my son's arm to be so crushing. The cart drivers cannot swear without bringing in my son's name. These are the two things which make my son's arm so burdensome. So we see several things here. First of all, we see our Blessed Mother and her intercessory power holding back the just wrath of God, holding back her son's arm from punishing the world. And we also see that at least at that time, in the early part of the 19th century in France, the sins which offended God the most were those which directly attacked Almighty God. Abusing Sunday, not going to Mass, working on Sunday, and taking the name of God and the holy name of Jesus in vain. She also made reference to the first commandment when she asked the children, do you pray well? Do you say your prayers well? And they admitted, these simple children, no ma'am, not very well. And she told them, say your prayers every day. So prayer is how we give God the worship due to him. And in addition, of course, assisting devoutly at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So the worship due to God, reverence for his name, and reverence for his day, the Lord's day. These would make up the first three commandments, and Our Lady predicted at La Salette that a terrible famine would come over Europe, which in fact did take place. Now La Salette, the apparition at La Salette, is unique for a number of reasons. First of all, Our Lady appeared only one time, September 19, 1846, whereas in the next decade, she appeared to St. Bernadette at Lourdes more than a dozen times. Also, Our Lady appeared here to two children who were illiterate and not very religious. And in fact, throughout their lives, it would seem that Maximin, who was 11 years old when Our Lady appeared, and Melanie, who was 14, almost 15, that they always seemed to be misfits in their life. They bounced around from one thing to another. Melanie tried to enter a convent. She entered three different convents, never took her vows, moved from one place to another, finally settled in Italy. She went to Mass every day. They were devout for the rest of their lives after the apparition. Maximin entered a seminary twice moved around from one job to another, one place to another, died at a relatively young age of 39. Neither of them married, but both of them, to their dying breath, repeated their faith in the apparition and their insistence that what they had said was true. Now this apparition at La Salette received the highest approval of the church. It is one of a small number of apparitions formally approved and especially, again, we should take to heart the message of our Blessed Mother and reflect upon how she intercedes with her Divine Son, but also reflect upon those tears. Yesterday was the Feast of the Seven Sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows is a very sanctifying devotion because it reminds us that not only did our Divine Lord die on the cross, but His Mother suffered at the foot of the cross, and indeed throughout her life. 
we refer to the seven sorrows of Mary, beginning with the prophecy of Simeon, just 40 days after the birth of our Lord, when Simeon said, a sword shall pierce your heart, your soul. And then the second sorrow, the, the flight into Egypt. The third, the loss of the child Jesus in the temple for three days. The fourth sorrow, when she met our Lord on the way to Calvary. The fifth sorrow, when she stood at the foot of the cross. The sixth sorrow, when the body of our Lord was taken down from the cross and laid in her arms. And she saw at close range those gaping wounds and the blood and the bruises and all that he suffered. And then finally, the seventh sorrow, when the body of our Lord was laid in, laid in the tomb and the stone was rolled across the entrance. So Our Lady endured these sorrows. Why? Not because she had any sins to atone for, but because she is the co-redemptrix. Our Lord willed to join her sorrows, her tears, her sufferings to his crucifixion and death for our salvation. So she is our mother of sorrows. She is our own mother who intercedes for us, who loves us. Let us reflect upon her sorrow. Let us offer atonement for our sins and the sins of others that caused her so much sorrow and reflect upon those tears that she shed. Tears because God is offended because her children are not loving and serving God as we ought. Let us especially remember that the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if we love him, we will obey his commandments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.